Praise God. I just want to thank God tonight that um, God has given me yet another opportunity to speak into your life for us to study together. I just believe tonight that um, um, tonight you're going to be blessed. And I pray that the word you hear tonight will help you to build up a better understanding why things around us are happening, things are happening the way they happen around us, and what is the mindset of God about the way things happen. Uh, tonight, the Lord wants me to do good justice to one of his words that the church or the body of Christ have misplaced. And tonight, I'm going to be doing according to the leading of the Spirit. All right? Now, if you have your Bible, I want you to go with me to the book of John chapter 10. Because a lot of people I have had when I was growing up, when I was growing up as a Christian, as a young believer, I was told that there's a scripture that says the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And I've had many churches and many ministers of God quote that scripture. I've had many believers in the buses, in, at work and outside work, quote that same scripture. The thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And any time this scripture is quoted, we were made to believe that the Bible was talking about Satan. That Satan is the thief. Satan is the killer and is the destroyer of the brethren. But that is not true, because that's not what the Bible is saying. And we are going to check it now, and I leave the rest to the Spirit to explain to us. Because, for some reason, like I said, in, I, I was preaching in a church a few days ago, and I said, said, many people are lying and lying against Satan. Satan did this, Satan did that. And the guy is saying, I've not even done anything these guys are saying I've done. So tonight we want to look at who is this thief that Jesus is talking about. Because we will know why he calls them thief. And then we can now bring everything back into the body of Christ and see what is happening in our churches. In all the churches of God. You wonder why people are hurting. People are so, they are so emotionally drained, frustrated, beaten, insulted, wounded, damaged within the church. Not that the enemy is doing it, but all these things are going on within the church. The church is complaining. People are not coming. People are going. They are walking away from the church, but you don't know what they are going through. Most of them have served and served. Most of them have been used and abused. But you don't know why they are not coming again. And so we want to look at what the scripture says. Okay, let's go together. I want you to open your Bible so that you will not think that Pastor Ola said something that is not in the scripture. So I want you to understand what is in the scripture and then we flow with it. And then I leave the rest with you. If you accept it or you don't accept it, it's up to your opinion. But either you, you, you accept it or not, the scripture is fulfilled already. And if you are a pastor watching me, I want you to be prepared tonight. If you are a bishop, if you are an archbishop, whatever your position in the church is, I want you to be prepared for me tonight. If you are a member of the church who have been wounded, who have been damaged, who have been messed up, who have been kicked and, and beaten and, and, and insulted and kicked every corner, I want you to be prepared for me tonight as well. Because tonight, we are going to settle everything here based on the scriptures. Amen. Now, let's go. Now, the Bible says from verse 1, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that enter not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other ways, the same is a thief and a robber. Now, we have seen number one. We want to identify who is this robber or who are these robbers. He that does not enter by the door. Now you will see when Jesus starts to explain it. 
And I'm not surprised that people don't understand it because even his own disciple did not understand it until he had to explain it. All right? He that climbed by another door. Many churches are not following the teachings of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the door. Now, they are not following the teachings of Jesus anymore. They are following the teachings of the Old Testament, which is um, what somebody said, what the prophet taught. They are all good at that time. But Jesus came to change most of these things and the church refused to change them. All right? The church refused. The church said, I'm going to stand on, well, my enemy must die. And God said, forgive your enemy. Jesus said, forgive your enemy. For, pray for your enemies. Now, there are a lot of things, and I won't go into that. I've talked about that. So if you need those tapes, call me. I'll give you those tapes so you can listen to them. All right? But tonight is a different thing entirely. Now, it says, But he that enter in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the potter. Now, I want you to underline the word the potter. So I'm going to be trying. I'm going to, I hope God will give me the time. I want us to quickly know who is the shepherd, who is the potter, who is the thieves, or who are the thieves. We need to know these three people before we understand the, 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 um, the context with which Jesus was explaining these things. So he said, to him the potter opened. The potter, his work is to lock people inside. Do not allow them to go out at their own will. So the potter there represents Satan. That is the guy that does not allow people, he does not give them free will to go out and worship, to go out and serve God. Is the guy that locks them in. All right? Now, the shepherd is Jesus. We are going to look at that and see what Jesus called himself. He said, I'm the good shepherd. So you're going to see the shepherd. Then you are going to see the people that he called the thieves. He said, they are the hirelings. They are the hirelings. They were hired by somebody. All right? Let's go further. And then, and he put it forth, the verse 4, and he put it forth his own sheep and go before them. That's, he's talking about the shepherd. He goes before his shepherd, his sheep. And the sheep follow him for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him for they know not his voice. Now, because of time, let's go to verse 8. That's where Jesus tried to explain because verse 7, they didn't understand, so he went to verse 8. Now, he says, all that ever came before me. Now, he did not say, Satan that came before me. He said, all that ever came before me. So he's not talking about one person. All that ever came before me. He said, they are the what? The thieves and the robber. He's talking about prophets here. He's talking about prophets who destroy souls. He's talking about prophets who wounded, who damage people, people that they are meant to build up. He's talking about prophets, pastors, ministers of God who, 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 who do not have the interest of the people, the flock at heart. They would rather think of what they can gain from people rather than what they can impact on their flocks. They would rather think of what they can take from their flock and eat from their flock and, you know, take, I mean, deplete their flock. But they will never invest in the life of the flocks. And he calls them the thieves and the robbers. Let me give you a good example. Elijah, the Tishbite, he destroyed 50 armies of Ahab. What did they do to him? The second 50 came. What did they do to him? He destroyed their lives. For what? What did they do? Did they insult him? Did they abuse him? But just a show of power. When the disciples of Jesus in Luke chapter 9 from verse 54, we are going to do the same. What they said to Jesus, Master, shall we call down fire to destroy these people as Elijah did? What did Jesus say to them? He rebuked them. He said, you do not know the kind of spirit that is inside of you. Do you think you have the kind of spirit of Elijah? A destroying spirit? No. And today, most people are following those kind of teachings. When Jesus has said, listen, 
Pray for those that despisefully use you. Those that curse you, bless them. We become too emotional. We forget our spirit and we become too emotional. We deal with people with emotions, not with spirit anymore. Just watch what he's going to share with you tonight. I'm not the one speaking, he's the one speaking. Okay, just watch. Now, he says, verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved and shall, not, and shall go in and out and find pastures. If the man goes through me, do you know what is happening today? Most, men, most churches, most Christians, you believe in your men of God more than Jesus. The Bible says looking unto Jesus, not looking unto your men of God. You are looking unto human, the best of human. Let me tell you this, the best of human is a human being. They will promise you sincerely, but they will fail you sincerely. You need to start teaching your members. Not to look unto you. Not to turn you to a demigod. You are human pastor. You are human bishop. You are human evangelist. You are human uh, uh, apostle. Whatever title or name you call yourself. You are human. Don't turn yourself to a demigod. So much that people respect you more than they respect Jesus. So that people run to you before they run to Jesus. Don't turn yourself to a prayer contractor for people. Don't do that. Lead them to Jesus. And keep them there. Even though you pastor over them. Lead them to Jesus. Let them know Jesus. Most church, church members know you as a pastor, but they do not know your Jesus as much as they know you. Is it not a shame? Is it not a shame? Did you die for them? You didn't. You did not die for anybody. Now let's see what, what Jesus is saying here. Verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. It's, that is the work of the thief. They come to steal from you, steal your talent, steal your time, steal everything from you, Without giving anything back. They steal your time. Steal everything from you. They steal. And then they kill your talent. They kill you. They kill your joy. They kill your fire. They kill that zeal you have. They take it away from you. And then they destroy it. Now look at what Jesus said. Verse 11. He said, I am the good shepherd. I am. The what? The good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Now, I have identified who is the shepherd. Jesus is the shepherd. Who is the potter? The potter is Satan. Who are the thieves and the robbers? The thieves and the robbers are the prophets, the pastors, the apostles, the evangelists, the, the king, whatever title they give themselves on one condition. As long as they are not feeding you, if they are feeding you with the word of God, and the word of God they are feeding you with, is transforming you, then you are blessed. Is that not true? But also, they are also supposed to feed you with their finances, not just with, their, with the world. Not with the world. The apostles fed the people. Jesus fed the people. Not with what they gain alone, but even with food, materially. Not to always take from people, talk, take from member, take from member. When will men of God learn to share their wealth with people? Share their wealth. Share what they have. God has blessed you with so much. Bible says, he that lend it to the poor, he that give it to the poor, lend it to God. You have five cars. You have so much money in a bank account. You are building an empire for what? When there are souls around you dying every day. And you say you are not a killer. You say you are not a steal. You are not the one that is stealing their joy. You say you are not the one that is destroying them. It's the enemy. You are a liar. You are a liar, a liar, a serious liar. Children of God, listen to me tonight. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, 
chapter 23. God said, I'm angry with pastors. I'm angry with shepherds. I'm angry with, 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 with uh, 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 prophets. I'm angry with them because they're not looking after my flock. They've scattered my flock. They've messed up my people. I'm angry with them. They tell you prophecies that you want to hear. They tell you things that is not true. They tell you things from their heart, not from the mouth of God. God said, I'm angry with them. They say things to you just because they want, to, they want you to respect them and take, they take something from you, but not to hurt to your life. Come on, people. I know how you feel. I know so many people have been wounded. So many people have been destroyed. Your joy, you started well with God. You had a great joy of salvation, but they took it away from you. But tonight, I want you to know that God is listening. God is, is hearing. God is here. He's looking at everything that's happening in your church. He's looking at everything you are doing, pastor. And he's looking at everything you have done to your people. And the great judge sits in heaven. Is going to judge. It's going to judge between pastors and the flocks. It's going to judge between the church and the members. It's going to judge between the church and the world. You are condemning people of the world. The people of the world are even, they are even more compassionate than some men of God, than some children of God in the church. In church, there's no compassion anymore because the, the anointing comes from the head and it flows to, the, to everybody because of the rottenness the rottenness of those who call themselves men of God in the churches of God. But there are some who are genuine. I celebrate those who are genuine. I celebrate those who are sincerely for the Lord. Let me tell you something, brethren, as you are listening to me tonight. There are different kind of pulpits. And I pity you because I know that some of you, the Bible said my people perish for lack of knowledge. There are some people that are called by God. There are some people that have been called by situation. They lost their job. They lost everything they ever worked for. And they came into the ministry because they do not have any other thing to do. There are some that love God genuinely. They just love God. And they feel the only thing they could use to show their love to God is to be called into ministry. Let me tell you something tonight. There's a guy called John, John the Beloved in the Bible. Even though he loved Jesus to beat and Jesus loved him too. But Jesus never gave the ministry into his hand. Because you love God does not mean you, should, you are called by God. Whatever God does not order for, he will not pay for. Wherever he has not sent you, he will not back you up. I want you to have a clear understanding about what is happening tonight. Because a lot of people are under, because there's confusion. You don't know who God has called. You don't know who has called himself. You don't know who, are, who people have said, ah, you are a pastor. You have gone to Bible school. You can start a church. You, are, you don't know. You are just sitting on that people. And you are discouraged. You are frustrated. If you listen to my tape, when I talked about the scriptures, it's given for correction for direction, for instruction. If you look at, listen to that sermon, that will help you. You will be able to discern who is called by God, who is not called by God, who has called himself. I mean, you see some men of God today, if you give them five, just 500,000 pounds, they will leave the pulpit. They will leave the pulpit because that's not their place. They are only there because there's nothing else to do. Listen to me tonight. Verse 11. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his own life for his sheep. Now, that is how you know a good shepherd. Ask yourself, how many pastors have, are ready to give their lives for their sheep? How many are willing? The Bible says we know the grace of Christ, that though he was rich, but he became poor, that you may be rich. Not that you may be poor. He, get, he, he left everything that he became poor so that you can be rich, not that you may become poor, so that your pastor may become rich. That is not it. Pastor, it's high time you start thinking of how do we, how do you empower your people? How do you uplift your people? How do you support your people? They call you father, father, father in the Lord, father in the Lord. Are you a true father to them? Are you behaving like a father to them? 
Is that the way a true father behaves to his children? Ask yourself these questions tonight. Praise God. He said, let's go look at the next one. Verse 12. I'm going to be running up soon. But, is, but he that is an hireling. You know, in verse 11, he said, I am the good shepherd. Now look at, he that is an hireling. And these hirelings are those people that he was calling the thief, the, 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 the thief and the robbers. What is the work of the thief and the robber? They have come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That is their job. So I pity you, children of God, who are sitting under hirelings. I pity you and I pray for you tonight that may God deliver you from this bondage. That you are sitting under an island. Now look at what that an island would do. Uh, let's go, let's get deeper. And now, and but he that is an island and not a shepherd, okay, whose own the sheep are not, they are not your own. That's what he's saying. That you have stolen them. You have stolen them. They are not your own. That's what he's saying. Whose sheep are not. See the wolf. They see an attack coming on their, sheep, on their sheep. Let me tell you this as a random. I've seen many people prophesy to people. Oh, or, say, or, they, or let's even say it as simple as possible. I had a dream. They say, I had a dream about you. I had a dream that this is going to happen. May this not happen to you. They are saying that, but wait until that thing eventually happens. You will see them start saying, I said it. I said it. They will be rejoicing over, I said it. They want to become a true prophet because of that dream they've said. Because of that doom they prophesied. They're waiting for it to happen. But they pretend to you that they have prayed for you. But you wait until that calamity happens. You will see them trying to take credit from that. Are you getting me tonight? They are getting credit from evil prophecy, doom prophecies. Things that they, why did God show you? If God truly showed you, why did God show you? Is it not for you to intercede like Abraham interceded for Lot and for Sodom and Gomorrah? Are you not supposed to intercede? Are you supposed to be wishing that it happened so that your name can be, you can glorify yourself? Evil. Wickedness in high places. Wickedness. Look at this. It says, verse 13. It says, the hireling flee. He runs away. He flee because he's an hireling. And care not for the sheep. You know those who are, your, who are the hireling tonight. You know those who are the thieves and the, 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 the robbers tonight. You know those who have come to kill, to, kill to, to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy tonight. You know them tonight. You don't need anybody to tell you any other thing. You know them tonight. You know those who don't care for your soul. You know those who are all about give me, give me, give me, give me. Always taking, always taking, and never supporting. Not never giving, but always taking. You know them tonight. You know those that just want to use you to build up their church. Once they build, you build the church, they work, in fact, they forget you. You know them. You know those children. I want you to be hoping from tonight. Start looking. Does my pastor truly love me? Does he really have my love in his heart? Does he have compassion for me? Is he really praying for me? Hallelujah. Is he praying for me? Or is he just telling me I'm praying for you? And he's not praying. Is it compassionate? Men of God don't think about people who are, who are poor in the church, people who are struggling in the church. You are concentrating on the rich people. You are concentrating on people that can give big offering, big tithes. They are, your, they, they are the good members of, the, of your church. Is that not true? Is that not true? Wickedness in high places. So I pray tonight that by the grace of God, I'm going to stop here tonight and I'll continue next week. But I pray that by the power and the authority that is in the name of Jesus, that God will set those people who are in bondage in different churches. 
Though we are in bondage, in the hand of the islands, may God set you free. Those who are under the teachings, under the anointing of a true shepherd, I celebrate you. But I don't want you to stop there. I want you to start interceding for those who are in the wrong camp. That from wherever they are, may God start to bring them forth. May God start to set them free in the name of Jesus. I thank God for tonight and I appreciate what God has done tonight. I really celebrate you tonight because you have heard the word and it does the true word of God. And you shall know the truth and the truth you know shall set you free. So the Lord Almighty bless you. The ancient of days bless you. The King of Kings bless you in Jesus' mighty name. I will see you next week and we shall take it from, from there. The Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Omega Fire Ministries UK presents September to Remember with Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Theme Absolute Freedom on 2nd and 3rd September 2015. This is your time for absolute healing, deliverance, freedom, and salvation. Come and experience the prophetic and unique calling of Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Woman, I saw you bent. And I look on top of the casket and I began to see cancer. Uh, she lost all her hair. You are what? You are on chemotherapy. September to remember. Time Wednesday, 2nd September at 6 30 p.m. and Thursday, 3rd September at 9 45 a.m. and 6 30 p.m. Venue The Lighthouse. 254 to 270 Camberwell Road, London, SE 50DP. For more information, contact us on 0798-449-6693 or 0795-077-0396. All the sorcerers, all the witchcraft tokens, may they expire!